Hello, everybody. This is Bob Warwick, and we're doing another episode of The Way Things Were, uh, visiting with people who went to various high schools here in El Paso, Texas. And today we're doing El Paso Tech. My guests are Mary Yanez, who's usually sitting in my seat, and Ralph Adame. They both went to Tech, and we're going to start visiting with them in a minute. But I have some notes here that I want to read, basically and give you some history of El Paso Tech's, Tech. Rather. Believe it or not, what we've become, uh, what's become known as El Paso Tech began its existence in 1917 as the El Paso Vocational School, and this was the first magnet school in El Paso County, Texas, 1917. In 1956, the El Paso Technical High School, or El Paso Tech, which we'll be referring to it, would open a new magnet campus at 2200 Arizona, which is now the current site of the Armendariz Middle School. By 1956, when El Paso Tech's Tech opened, it already had changed locations two times due to an increase in enrollment. At one point, El Paso Tech was in the location where the Rio Grande campus of El Paso Community College is now currently located. In order to become a comprehensive vocational high school, El Paso Tech's curriculum included athletic and music facilities and academic classes in addition to vocational programs. Today, El Paso Independent School District Center for Career and Technology Education still uses the shops that were built at the rear of the high school for vocational training. The El Paso Tech Lions, because Lion was their mascot, excelled in both academics and athletics. In 57 to 62, it was actually the top math school in the entire state. In 1958, it tied for the district basketball championship. From 59 to 64, it dominated the cross-country track and field. And in 63, it won the city football championship, of which Mr. Adame was a team member. And it was also the first high school to have a wrestling team. In 1970, El Paso Tech was changed from a comprehensive technical high school to a district-wide vocational school with half-day programs. Having given you that background, I now want to introduce you to Mary Yanez and Ralph Adame. Mary, we'll start with you because, again, you're usually sitting in my seat. <laughs> and because I graduated in 1961, and Ralph followed later in 1965. Who, so I, who was your principal when you our, started? Our principal was Mr. Young, and then we also had Mr. Smith, and, and uh, there were two, at that time, two assistant principals. So, so our principal was Mr. Young, wonderful uh, administration, very supportive of students. It, it was a, a high school, and, and, uh, and I know that uh, Ralph will agree with me. It, it was great in those growing years, in those teen years. Teen years. years. And this jacket, would you believe that Ralph brought? It is so beautiful. It rem brings back so many memories. And I want to point out, too, I talked team. about him being a member of the yeah. football team, the championship team. Those three bars, I understand, were the three years you were on the team? Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. Awesome. Um, Ralph, who was your principal? Mr. Patton. And what was he like? He was an ex-Marine. <laughs> 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 Kept the haircut. He was brought over from Bowie. Right. He was an assistant at Bowie then when they... Uh, they had a change, I guess, when Mr. Smith, particular Mr. Smith, uh, stepped down. So Mr. Patton was very stern, very by the book, as you can well imagine. And another Mr. Smith was the assistant principal. Um, let me ask you, since this was a magnet school, mm -hmm. you could choose to go there. Correct. You were actually zoned for Austin, were you not, Mary? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, the interesting thing about El Paso Tech was that we had no district. Right. Uh, the the uh, kids, uh, teenagers came from all the different, from Sleda, they came from Austin, they came from El Paso High, uh, from all the different districts. And so we were a no district uh, high school. And so we met in high school kids that lived far away. All over the city. Mm -hmm. And so we were very popular. Right. Uh, and and it, was, it was a no district school. Why, why did you decide to go there, Ralph? Because being the great leader that I am, <laughs> I decided to follow my brother and my cousin to Tech. <laughs> and, so. and your reason? And my reason for going to Tech, my oldest sister uh, was at Loretto High School. And so she decided she wanted to go to public school. So she went in 1958 to El Paso Tech. And at that time, I was at St. Joseph's mm -hmm. uh, School. 
Catholic school, and so when I started high school, she drove us to school. So I went to the school my older sister went to. So you both went to the schools because your older mm -hmm. siblings went yes. there. And I had a sister that was in the same grade as I was, a Cecilia uh, Aguilar, and I was Mary Aguilar at the time. And it's two sisters going to school. So we had three sisters in school at one time. And you had two brothers in school? One brother and a cousin much later. And a cousin. <coughs> but wasn't Prior. there when you were there? No. He, okay. The cousin graduated with Mary in okay. 61. So he was there before you. Right, and my brother oh, graduated in 64. So what was, I want to get into, and I don't know if you'll know this, the differences between the times, the years that you attended. We'll start with you. You were there first. You were in the beginning. Yes. What Was there a dress code? No, there was no dress code. Was um, it strict? I, I don't think so. I think because it was a new school, we were bonding. Right. And the administration, the teachers were very supportive. Mr. Blount was uh, one of the coaches, and he was still at, in your era uh, teaching. The teachers were wonderful, very supportive. Mr. Anderson was another coach. Uh, and and uh, we, we I was in the business. I, I liked business uh, classes, so uh, those teachers were just preparing us for work. We kind of had an idea that many of the students were in the college route. Mm -hmm. Both There was a college mm -hmm. route and there was a general route. I don't know why it was like <laughs> that way, but uh, most of our students were in the college route. That but you took the other route? I, I was in the college route, but I didn't get to go to college right after high school. Right. I, I did that later. But one of the things I remember as a young lady in those years were, were the tea dances. Right. The tea dances, the rock and roll, the music. Uh, I remember the Lions in Luxury, which was a, a spring dance, very formal, that all the schools had spring dances. I was a freshman representative. What did we call them? Um, uh, to Duchess. another school. You were Duke's Royal Royal representatives. Yeah. Duchesses. Duchesses at represented tech at Bowie High School's uh, Bowie uh, Spring. So you got all dressed up? And oh, yes. It was, it was awesome. Form, and were know. they still doing it when you were there? Yes, yes. And when we were there, uh, I got there at eighth grade through, <coughs> through 12. And the school was transitioning from a, who had been a vocation adult center right. to a straight academic normal high school so for example we still had the smoking section <laughs> that uh, between the a b a and b wings which looked like a huge ashtray you know <laughs> covered covered it with chicken wire sand underneath chicken wire and people could still smoke there because obviously you still had some adults primarily at night right obviously by the time i graduated that smoking pit section was gone and we became more of a traditional high school there was no more night school by the no time? more at that point no more night school it was strictly a traditional Austin, El Paso High, Bowie, Jeff type high school. What, was, was the a night school more for like ESL, learning English, or was it a vocational? It was vocational in nature okay. because they could come and use the shops and uh, they would have s cosmetology and back then the early years of computer technology, those were in traditional classrooms. Okay. They were not in the shops out in, out in the back. Because the school was here, the gym, the cafeteria, then there was a separate campus where all the shops were lined up. Could kids, could your contemporaries go take classes in the shops? Yes, they did. Yes, okay. they did. In fact, I, I, oddly enough, I never did. Right. But most of my peers that uh, were there took a shop. So we talked about whether it was strict or not with Mary. You had a Marine, an ex-Marine mm -hmm. for right. a principal. Right. How, how did he run the school? Oh, like, like, like a Marine base. If right. You in the Marines, there was no shenanigans. While there was no dress code, you still, back in the 60s, you still had to adhere. You know, you couldn't wear your pants down to your knees and right. so on. So it was run like that. And all the coaches, all the teachers were supportive of that. And generally, we were pretty well behaved, Absolutely. considering that we came from all over the district. And that's one of the reasons that we never really had a rival, because it's hard for you to go to tech in the morning or afternoon and then go back to your home school. Right. There's still not some sort of affiliation for that school. So that kind of made it unique that if you were a part-time student to tech just for the shops, you actually belonged to two high schools. Right. Unlike right. us that were there all the time, that's all we knew. So were they doing the tea dances? While tea you dances were, were traditionally after every football game. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's pretty much after every football game, you would uh, they would have the tea dance. Where did they do that? Cafeteria. Uh, in the gym. In the, in, the gym, gym. in the gym. Cafeteria was here. The gym <laughs> and was my, in day. my time, <coughs> it was in the cafeteria. Right. And then yeah, in no, they, time now they moved. <laughs> it was, I guess, remember the school started to grow as well as they added more and more kids brought in there. So ours were in the gym, at, uh, which was next to the field house. Well, obviously, it was very popular sort of concept. If, I mean, I mentioned in the intro that it moved from where 
the Gre Rio Grande campus of the community college is right now mm -hmm. to, to Arizona. But even before it was at the Rio Grande campus, it was at another campus. So it moved a number mm -hmm. of times. I had never known it was a magnet school. I mm -hmm. had no idea. And I think it's probably pretty fascinating that you knew kids from all over mm -hmm. the city. Pretty much. And yeah. one of the things that, that, I, that I, uh, need to mention is that because of the tea dances, because of this generation of rock and roll dancers, to this day, <laughs> the bands that played in those, in those times are still playing and they're seniors. And they're still having dances and those dances are jam packed. We were a dancing generation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all the, the senior dances in the, uh, I mean, they're so still rock and rolling. So you're saying that the bands that played then are still playing some now with the same still, people? Yes, the you musicians. Not, they're still around. They're still <laughs> still wow. around. Do you know so the names of some of them? Yeah, well, I do. Rosales, what's the name of Rosales' uh, band? He still plays. I, I don't. I didn't bring a list, but. Okay, well, I have to tell the people who are watching. I couldn't shut these two guys up as we were getting ready to <laughs> come and tape this. I mean, they just started, <laughs> you know, yapping about their high school years. What about keeping friendships from uh, high school? Do you keep in touch with people? We do. And, and again, what was unique about tech at that time, not that we called it a magnet school, is that you could be dating someone from another school. Right. So, you know, you could be a tech and you could be dating someone from Isleta right. or someone from Bowie, whatever. So it made for interesting I bet it uh, did. relationships because you'd have to go pick up your girl the day of the football game with your tech. And then, <laughs> and so it made, but uh, yeah, we, I still keep up with my core friends. Uh, Richard Perez, who was a printer and he's in the yearbook, I still see him. Yeah. He actually retired from EPISD. Uh, one of the things that, that I wanted to mention is we do have uh, the, uh, the uh, dances, mm -hmm. the uh, reunions. But they're getting, because the, the high school ended in the 70s, early mm -hmm. 70s, Correct. we're getting older <coughs> and older and older, and pretty soon there'll be three students that are going <laughs> to that <laughs> <laughs> What's the alternative, <laughs> right? right. We, don't have have we don't have an alumni association, but we do have a group that gets together and puts an annual dance. Is that right? And yeah. that's what we do. And is it well attended? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. But it's, it's mixed, me. isn't it? With see. all the schools come, Bui comes, Jefferson comes. Really? <laughs> yes, they all this, they Where support us. Where do you have us. it? They used and to be at the, at the Almighty Shrine, Shrine Temple. Can I come to the next yeah. one? Yeah, sure. I, I would like to do you that. You sit at our table. <laughs> yes. I don't know if we can get a shot of and this, but this was Ralph Adame. It was yes. infamous glass. With yes. his glasses. <laughs> Very good. When he was in high school. those glasses are back. They notice that they're, you're using those round, big yeah. glasses. Yeah. I used to have the Harry, pot, Harry Potter glasses. Oh. <laughs> okay. And you're going to try and look for your I'm gonna yearbook. I'm going to bring it, yes. And I'll show yeah, you. Yeah, those glasses are coming back. Talk about retro, huh? And what, it, Mary, what about you talking about, we were talking about friends and keeping in touch with people, and I know you're talking about the, the dances and stuff, but do you still have close friends from high yes, school? Yes, I do, and I, I see them uh, uh, off and on. Uh, we, we go about our own family business and our professions, but when we see each other, it, it, it's a joy, and um, there's a lot of respect um, that we have for peers in high school. We just carry them into our older years. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those friendships. Which is like very English. different from my experience again. Now, I live over 2,000 miles away from the high school I went to. And again, when I was growing up, there was one high school in my town. I mean, that, that was it. There was none of this. There was a parochial school, mm -hmm. I remember, but one high, I don't even know who we played in football. Maybe we yeah, played each other. Maybe we played <laughs> ourselves. That's right. I, I don't know. <laughs> but you know, there's, we're finding also, Ralph, and maybe you can talk about this. Many people have left, go to California or other uh, states, but they come back. <coughs> they come back in their older years to take care of elderly parents, and then we get to see them again yeah. when they're back, and they look for, for Well, us. they come down for our annual dance. Is, I think so that's they incredible. They actually do migrate from California, and then they come in from Albuquerque or anywhere in Dallas or where they're at. They come in for the dance because it's huge. You know, I get I have clients who come in the office who grew up here and went to high school mm -hmm. here, and they don't live here anymore, and they all come back and they say, I wish I still lived here. I mean, mm -hmm. I've been here 45 years now. I think this is like the perfect place to live. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to and die, because if I die any place, it's going to be here. Be here. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, and our yearbook uh, is called The Monarch. Right. And our, of course, our mascot was the lion. And, and your colors were white and green. And, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, yes, green and white. Everything was based on the regal, you know, the 
king of the jungle and all that kind of well, stuff. One of the programs like that I belonged to was the distributive education DE program. In my senior year, I worked half at a day. At a corset shop. Uh, yeah. I remember <laughs> correctly. They assigned me to Margie's corset shop where I went <laughs> to work half a day, went to school half a day, and uh, that was my first job. Uh, I was in the inventory in Brazier's, and, uh, and so, you know, it was... <laughs> Well, you certainly made some changes, but I was going to ask this question to you, and then I'm going to ask Ralph. Do you think that El Paso Tech helped prepare you to be the people you are today? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Ralph? Yes. Again, this is it was traditional high school. It did not have as big an impact as Mary because those that took shop, that became their vocation right. and their uh, eventual careers. Mine was a general education, so... Prepared you for college, Prepared though. me for, for college, college, and th that like a traditional high school, but not in the traditional sense like Mary, that that's what tech was for. How do you think, how do you think it prepared you for college? A oh, good academic background. Good academic. You know, the, the basics were Absolutely. there, allowed me to actually be able to take a decent SAT. They had SATs back right. then, and be able to enroll. Was there anything about not being able to speak Spanish in school? Not at all. No, again, we, it was... 60s we weren't used to not you know we weren't as liberal as we are now about right. what we can and cannot do we were assimilated into english all the way from elementary school middle school so by the time we got to high school but english, english was english. Our, yes. when we got home it became spanish Out right. outside of the house it was always english so and, and i think that's terrific i mean i hear some stories about going to school in el paso where if the kids came to school and spoke spanish they were reprimanded mm -hmm. um which is kind of ridiculous mm -hmm. because being bilingual just opens up the world to you. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think there was occasions where you throw in some Spanglish. Right. Okay, but th that was overlooked because it was not, we didn't sit there and communicate for hours on end in Spanish or in the classroom. It was all English and occasionally. Yeah, I try to Spanish. communicate in Spanish and they look at me. I can see I, why, Bob. And yeah, I'm glad I you go, didn't. In Spanish, <laughs> I said, why don't you understand my Spanish? <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> so. Que problema. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> It was wonderful. So, what, now the other thing that always fascinated me about El Paso is geographically, I mean, it's really isolated. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think that affected your growing up years? Well, it, as part of the high school experiences in football, we had to travel to Odessa right. and Midland and, uh, and other places. And other so isolated yeah, places. Ex yeah, exactly, but those were long trips yeah. by bus. You know, we had and expensive. And, and yeah, and after the game, we'd have to find a place that was open to feed us. Right. Because you figure teenagers were ravenous, so we'd had coaches would negotiate with a cafeteria and say, okay, it's all you can eat. And normally, go for a set price. So that was interesting, being able to travel outside the city. Right. Even though, what do we know? Midland, Odessa, Fort Hancock, and they weren't exactly dollars for Houston, but you know. What is your business, Ralph? I'm in the wireless internet business. Uh, which is? We provide wireless internet to businesses here in Juarez and the surrounding communities. Nice. How did it's you get into that? I, I, it's, I got a degree in computer science and okay. business. And so I was working, uh, selling computers, went to work for Apple Computer. And then I wanted to come, they wanted me to relocate. And I said, I'm not going to do that. Good for like you. Like most El Paso's, yeah. I didn't want to leave. So I, I actually was joined the local company here, started a business, sold it and then eventually started this one again. Great. Bought into this one. Yeah. And Mary, everybody in town knows you. <laughs> so how, how did you get to what you're doing today? What Nobody knew me in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. But um, I, th I think my uh, de uh, evolution or my, my, my development came later as far as high school. So I went to work right after high school. That's what I wanted to do. And right. I told my, my parents wanted me to go to college. We'll pay for your college, go to UTEP, or uh, Texas Western College mm -hmm. at the time yeah, it was, was it. <laughs> Texas Western College. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I said, no, I want to work, I want to get clothes, and I want to buy a car, or whatever. And so I went to sc work with uh, El Paso Plastering Company. And I was a secretary, did the payroll and the whole bit at right. 19 years old. Yeah. And then I, and then I, I went to work at UTEP I worked there about eight, ten years, and then I started working at community college because it was opening its doors in 1973, uh, 40, 40, 45 years ago. And, um, and so the college was the one that opened the doors for me for education. So I came to EPCC, got my associates, mm -hmm. um, got my bachelor's at age 50, 
by the way. And then I, I got my master's at age 56. So I was a late wow, bloomer you were in late education. Because I'm 75 now. I don't know, would you believe really? that? <laughs> and so I was a late bloomer. But they went to college right after high school, which is a wonderful right. time, too. That was an interesting experience. Yeah. yeah. But so what is your job here at the, uni at the college? I'm the director of the senior adult program at the college. And I also do the Mature Living Show for EPCC right. e TV. Uh, I belong to boards, and and I, I love my community, and I love serving. So do you. Mm -hmm. You served on the foundation Correct. board of the of the college, and, and so I know Ralph because we serve on the ethics commission. Yes, for and the so, city. So I think the civic mindedness. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that came from. Uh, I don't know about you, Ralph, but uh, it was just something that you you're. It's kind of innate because some people are professionals. They go through the college thing, and and, and they don't do anything for the community right. they're just there why why do you think that there is such a strong connection I mean again I would never be able to locate I probably burned it <laughs> my my high school <laughs> yearbook I mean I I just uh, why is there this connection between individuals and their high schools in this town I think it, it uh, for us because it's tech and the fact it's not there anymore right so we have a very short window that we existed unlike others that went to the traditional high school that are still here, we had to kind of embrace it even more so to keep the memory going. To keep it going. Yeah, keep the memories, keep, keep the com camaraderie, keep the friendships that were established back during the, that short window. And that's why we have yes. this one dance every I year. Think so I think it's time, it's, 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 it's like you've got to preserve it. Right. You've got to preserve that and. Because yeah, it's gone. It's there is no El Paso time. Right. Yeah, it's gone. And not, not like the El Paso High that's still there, Isleta, Ooh, you know, Austin, Jefferson, Jefferson Bowie. Uh, th they're still there. Ours is gone. Our high school ended. This but all here we got. did it end. Right right yeah, right. This is all we got, right? The annuals and the, and the friendships. Well, is your experience like mine? I mean, when you meet people that you don't, although I don't know that you guys probably don't know new anybody. I mean, you know everybody already is what I'm trying to say. But when you meet new people, do they say to you, where did you go to high school? No, it's not always the case. And it, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 that's a given. It's that's the, a given. First that's question. the first question. Where did you go to high school? Yeah, that's a given. I don't know why, but um, that's a given. El Paso and high schools are something. There, there's something unique about that. Yeah, well, I, I think in El Paso more so because traditionally uh, not a lot of us Hispanics go to college. That's getting better now. But I'm talking about in the early days, if you look at the, the, the demographics of UTEP, very few Hispanics, very local Hispanics. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. It, UTIP didn't flip, I think, till much till recent times. So wow. So because of that, high school for us was the momentous uh, tr um, uh, milestone in right. our lives because even our parents had may perhaps not even gone to high school. And so my parents went to Bowie, and very few parents graduated from Bowie High School. Uh, um, they they maybe went to third grade. Other parents. So I was very proud of my parents right. because they were in the 30s. 1930s graduating from Bowie. Mm -hmm. um, to them, it was like, you must go to school. You must go to school. School, school, mm -hmm. education was what they but uh, this was drove defined. into us. High school was defined as a school. And yeah. graduation was not college. That was right. the end. You did it. You got to your graduation, you graduated from high school, and that was it for many. Yeah, because there wasn't necessarily an assumption you were right. going yeah. to, college. to go on. Yeah, that's why Diana, every, every graduating class, she says, How many of you are first generation college yeah. graduates? because she knows that is an, the second milestone now right. for, our, for, our gener for our kids' generation. And even in our EPCC commencements, that's a question. Mm -hmm. How many of you are first-generation college graduates? Wow. That, I mean, that's... Yep. I, I grew up in Jersey. Mm -hmm. I didn't know an Hispanic from a Greek. I mean, and I, I came down here, and you know, I love this culture. Mm -hmm. I think I told you we just took a trip down to South America, and... I mean, that was great. My wife and I were speaking Spanish. She speaks much better Spanish than Thank I God. did. Thank God. But uh, this guy comes over. I, I'm apologizing to the audience. I may have told the story already. Was the owner of the, re here, owner of the restaurant here is us talking in Spanish. And he comes over and he said, how do you speak Spanish? I said, well, we're from El Paso. And he goes, oh, my God, one of my best friends lives in El Paso. Yeah, yeah. And it was a judge that I know. So oh, it's a small, awesome. small world. Yes, it is. I love that story. But you know what? I want to kind of end this up 
if you don't mind, because we've talked a lot about this. I want to bring everybody up to date on what the situation is with El Paso Tech today. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Great. So I'm going to have to read from my notes again. Uh, today, the Center for Career and Technology Education currently has 27 programs, nine of which offer dual credit with the El Paso Community College, as well as 26 of the programs offering state or national certifications or licensures. And this is all what's grown out of what we've known as El Paso Tech. Many of the classes participate in the business community in non-paid internship programs and community service projects. Career and technical student organizations offer leadership and competitive opportunities to members at the district, regional, state, and national levels. These organizations include Skills USA, FCCLA, HOSA, and FFA. 85% of the graduates matriculate to some form of post-secondary education. I think that's really saying something mm -hmm. for the high school that you came from. And even though it doesn't exist anymore as a high school, this is what uh, it's providing now to the community. I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly did. And if there's anybody out there who wants to get their high school on this program, please call Mary at... 831-7801. Or call me at 779-3619 and we'll make arrangements to get you on the program. And I think I'd like to fade out of this particular program. No, 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 no. no. Ralph is going to hum it and yes. Mary is going to sing it. <laughs> but let's hear the fight song for El Paso Tech. I know it had yeah. something to do with Lions. Yes, of course. Well, and, and you know, one of the things that used to happen at the football games, the band learned cherry pie as well. Mm -hmm. was one of our uh, kind of uh, favorite uh, songs that Tech would go crazy when they played cherry pie. But the fight song goes something like, Go Lions! Go Lions! <laughs>